So, explain in the beginning of the program, uh, thanks to Alex Lester for stepping in yesterday. I was caught up in the kind of post triple storm chaos, uh, trying to comparatively short journey uh, from Suffolk to Greatest Hits Radio Central Studios. And uh, I got there sort of about this time, actually. I arrived home about six o'clock. You know, wow. That kind of time. So, it was a long, odd haul, uh, which is why we didn't have a confession yesterday. Ah. Uh. So, uh, let's do a confession for today. This is the first one of the week. Uh, it comes from Nigel. By the way, uh, the show this week is being produced by producer Katie, who's stepping in and stepping up. And the thing is, I don't know whether Katie's a naturally forgiving person or is a naturally kind of outraged person or would be very condemnatory. How would you, how would you describe yourself? I would say ordinarily forgiving, but I am channeling Sister Susie for that's the right. week. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely. That's a very, that's a very strong uh, position uh, to be in. You're the voice of authority. <laughs> <laughs> next to the brother from another gutter. Yes. Uh, Nigel says... <clears throat> it's Nigel, but it's not that Nigel, obviously. Uh -huh. Father Simon, marvellous Matt, even if he has no morals to speak of, Correct. and the always top-notch producer. Uh, usually Sister Susie, but today it's Sister Katie. My name is Nigel, and I'm married to Laura. A few years back, we bought a house in the northeast sector of a top English city just after we got married. There were boxes everywhere... There were paint pots everywhere, cases full of all, all our possessions. It was generally chaos, but all very exciting. There were a few issues that we had to deal with. We had telephones, but we needed to wait for the phones to be connected. Our provider gave us a temporary number to start with before the permanent one would arrive. Anyway, so on the Monday, we had a temporary number. Everything was great for the first part of the week. Our friends were calling us and sending their congratulations on moving to the new house. But amongst the calls were a few asking for a certain hotel in the area and wanting to book rooms. Let's, for the sake of argument, call it the Grand Royal Majestic Imperial Hotel. OK. Obviously not. Obviously not. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> a pretty swanky affair, I have to say, Father Simon, the kind Brother Matt would object to on class war grounds. <laughs> correct. Unless he was offered a free room. Uh, also <laughs> correct. <laughs> See you in the bar <laughs> for a pint of sans hair. <laughs> well, by Wednesday, every other call that we received was for this wretched hotel. People wanting to book rooms, book suites, book massages and dinners. We were getting about 40 calls a night for the Grand Royal Majestic Imperial Palace Hotel or whatever it was I called it. We looked at their website and their phone number was the same as ours but with the last two digits reversed, hence the confusion. However, it was, as you can imagine, driving us crazy. And I got to the point when I was so fed up with this, I started to accept the bookings oh, no. for the Grand Majestic <laughs> of Palace Imperial yeah. mm. uh, Outreach Hotel. So you can guess what happened next. Caller. Uh, is this the Grand Majestic Royal Palace Imperial Hotel? Me. Uh, yes, this is Marcel. <laughs> How can I help? Now... <laughs> totally unnecessary. It is really. unnecessary, but Marcel <laughs> just sounds to me as though he could be a, a, a French person it, well, it definitely in, is in, a the French UK, in the UK <laughs> just helping out. Oui. You know, Marcel just that kind definitely, of thing. definitely sounds French. Okay. Yeah. Caller says... Uh, could you book me into your hotel, please, uh, for the weekend? We're there for the 21st. There'll be about eight of us. Um, so Marcel, Marcel says, uh, wait a minute, please. I just need to check. Yes, yes, we have availability. Oh, the caller says, we'll be staying for a couple of nights over the weekend, probably leaving Monday. Is that is okay, sir, I say? We'll look forward to seeing you then. I'm sure you'll find the majestic imperial uh, palace. palace. <laughs> Meets your requirements. Uh, requirements. Anyway, I took the full booking. I have to say, just to be clear, no credit card details were Obviously. taken, by the way. Yeah. I just told them to bring their credit cards when they arrived because our system was down at the moment. I gave them a reference number, which was always 76120ABS. And the next caller uh, came in, wanted to uh, book the Royal Suite on the top floor for a week in September. Certainly, sir, says Marcel. <laughs> uh, we look forward to your stay. <laughs> not not right. sure of the French, I'm not really. sure where that was going. <laughs> no. Uh, the, co the customer says, is there still a dress code? Um, <laughs> ah, says Marcel, not anymore. Come as you are, we, we make no judgments here. <laughs> here. This one I'm thinking, if you look at the website, it says, <laughs> formal dress required at dinner. Uh, if you can't oh, be no. bothered to look... Anyway, never mind. Well, I took... 
Over the period of a couple of days, I took 10 to 15 bookings. I sold out the restaurant and handed out free spa sessions left, right and centre. <laughs> the full Norwegian head and neck deep tissue and skin foliation aromatherapy douche experience Ooh. was very popular. What? When offered. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not had one of those? <laughs> At least one of those words sounds very wrong. Fa yes. Father Simon, it was fun for a while. <laughs> and, then, and then I started to tell customers that the hotel was sadly full. You can imagine, after about 40 or 50 calls, we were getting totally fed up. And Marcel was beginning to tire, poor lad. The next day we got to our provider and we got them to change the number. And Marcel could go back to being Nigel. I would like to seek forgiveness from the Grand Palace Majestic Royal Imperial Hotel and Spa in the east side of the city. See, not even going anywhere no, near no, the city. No. Um, who uh, would have had dozens of guests arriving with no knowledge of them at all or their bookings or the restaurant reservations or their spa requirements. And those expecting a five-star meal and a Norwegian head and neck deep tissue uh, experience will have been deeply, deeply disappointed. At the time, I thought it was funny, but realised maybe that I was misguided. However, the hotel is still in business, so no harm done. <laughs> still royal and majestic, but I bet it was a busy weekend for them, uh, and not at all for the right reasons. Well, I think you're probably right there. Oh, that's wow, right. that was, that was beautiful. Uh, that was a sharp world service turn there, <laughs> and that's where we leave popular music. <laughs> So, uh, so N Nigel has behaved reprehensively, but let's see how Sister Katie re uh, reacts to that one. Yeah, I, I can't forgive you, Nigel. I'm sorry. Not only have you left the restaurant probably very empty and yes. then without a lot of bookings, but some of those bookings probably were for anniversaries, for birthdays, yeah. lots of special occasions, and they've been left really disappointed when you could have just said, sorry, you've got the wrong number. So I'm sorry, That's Nigel, true. I'm not forgiving you. It's getting the voice of responsibility to my sister Susie, but brother from another guy. Uh, can I be alone in wondering whether it's the fault of the people dialing the phone in the first place? Who they're, they're dialing the wrong numbers. Unlucky you ended up with uh, Marcel, the very badly accented <laughs> French <you>. hotelier. <laughs> and also, what is this hotel that requires a formal dress code at dinner? Frankly, ridiculous. any hotel that requires a formal dress code at dinner gets what's coming to oh, it. Uh, so I say forgiven. Uh, okay, so one forgiven, one unforgiven in the studio. It's entirely down to you. So the people's verdict. Do you forgive Nigel? Yes or no? 61054. You start your message with Simon. 61054. Or you can email Simon at greatest hits radio .co .uk. Uh, First of all, some important business, uh, and that is the people's verdict on Nigel's confession, which is called You Can Check Out Any Time You Like, But You Can Never Leave. Uh, how he was given a phone number, which lots of people rang wrong because they thought they were ringing the Grand Majestic Royal in Paris Imperial uh, Spa and Dining Experience. <laughs> yes. Anyway, after a while, he pretended to be Marcel and just booked them in anyway. Doubtless chaos at a hotel in a leading city in the UK, he says vaguely. <laughs> yeah. People's verdict is in, here it comes. So Mary Fraser says, forgiven because Simon's accent was very, very, very funny. Outrageous. It did make me giggle. The French Somerset combination was a delight. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, yeah. Andy has clearly worked out how to get read out. I agree wholeheartedly with Matt, he says. Years ago, our phone number was similar to a local golf course, just the last two numbers reversed. We used to get calls to book on at ridiculous times of the morning, particularly at weekends or holidays. Eventually, I just booked them in at tea time. Might as well have some fun with it. And Rupert says, I forgive as my old phone number was one digit different to Argos. Christmas was an absolute <laughs> nightmare. Uh, if you have a confession for us uh, and we read it out, then you get a smart speaker courtesy of Greatest Hits Radio. Uh, send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, another confession tomorrow. Your confession, once you send it in, you get a smart speaker from us. That's the way it works. It has its own inbox. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That's what you need to know because here comes the tune... Very neat, I thought. I mean, no one could tell the difference <laughs> between <laughs> Candy Stanton yeah. and a little bit of Albinoni. Yeah. So here's today's confession. Uh, Brother Matthew uh, is here. Sister Katie is here producing the show. That's why it's in such impeccable order. Oh, correct. Uh, Thank you. Uh, as Thank ever. You. It's from Marky Mark. Marky Mark says, Simon and the Confessions Congregation, back in 1989, when I was a tender age of 18, I worked as a lathe turner in a factory in Portsmouth. I've been there for almost eight months and running my own section of ten machines when my foreman, Dave, announced that I would be getting a YTS student 
for younger listeners, that's the youth <laughs> training scheme. Yeah. A YTS student to work alongside me to learn the ropes and to lighten the load of me running 10 machines. I like this idea, as the work can be quite demanding at times. Anyway, the next day, this 16-year-old turned up and was introduced to me as Roger. Even though our ages were quite close together, he was very immature and mostly lazy, constantly finding places just to sit down and relax instead of getting on with work and learning. Roger the Dodger, I yeah. think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of his favourite places to sit was a bench where we used to... Now, this is the technical term, deburr the brass, as in remove the rough bits. This used to annoy me more than anything. He should be working, but he's sitting on the bench. Mm. In the bench where we deburr. We do deburr the brass bits. Yeah. That's yeah. what we do. One day, Rog was sitting on this bench, again, and I said to him, Here, Rog, don't sit there. You'll get metal mites. He said, no, I won't. Anyway, what are they? And I said, making this up as I went along, oh, metal mites, you know, they're, well, they're tiny bugs, like ordinary mites, small arachnids with eight legs, tiny, less than one millimetre in length, but metal mites live and crawl in amongst the brass scraps, and they pierce your overalls. Then they crawl up your bottom, <laughs> and they give you a poorly stomach. Oh, man. Who knew? Then they reproduce in your stomach and release gas for about six weeks. Right, okay. He said, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no yeah. such thing. Yeah. At this moment, another colleague walked over and said, what's going on then? I said, Roger here is sitting on the bench again and that he'll get metal mites. Well, my colleague, who clearly been listening, said, yeah, that's right, don't sit there, you will get metal mites. I got them once, very nasty. Couldn't walk straight for months. <laughs> Roger's eyes were on stalks. Right. You couldn't walk, he said. My colleague was playing the role perfectly. No, nope, he said, I reckon I... <laughs> <laughs> reckon I had a... <laughs> Have another go. Go on. Reckon I had a whole family get up there. <laughs> they rattled, rattled around for ages. <laughs> I think they ate part of my femur. <laughs> I mean, how they got from his stomach to his femur, I wasn't sure. But you have to know, if you haven't realised already, that Rog wasn't the sharpest pencil in the box. So it's my turn now. Yeah, and didn't uh, old Bob have to retire because of them? I said, my colleague looked grave. He did. Went sterile too. Well, Roger the Dodger was now white as a sheet. He got down, sharpish, and we carried on working. Well, the next day, I came into work and went to start up the machines before Roger arrived, when my foreman, Dave, called me into his office. Dave said to me, what did you say to Roger yesterday? I said, oh, why'd you ask? And Dave says, well, Roger is sick today. He's off. He's also sacked. I said, sacked? What, what for? So Dave says, well, Roger said he had a sickness caused by bugs in his stomach called <laughs> metal mites or some such lunacy. Anyway, he was clearly skiving, so I sacked him. Well, my jaw hit the floor, and I thought, oh, blimey, what an idiot. Uh, I, so I told Dave what had happened, but never, ever told Roger about the truth that metal mites don't exist. This is because I never saw him again. Anyway, however, in fairness, he did use it as an excuse to get the day off, but I don't think, he, I didn't think that he would get sacked. Anyway, I do feel bad, and I hope he's had a good life. Or, in fact, he's continuing to have a good life, you know, <laughs> because unless the mites... Well, you know, yeah. after eating a femur, they could turn around and yes. who knows where they go next. They're not existing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's right. There are, of course, no such thing as metal mites, there, so they don't um, bite through your overalls or anything okay, else. No. Uh, come to that. Uh, Sister Katie, producer of the show, what are you, the voice of authority, what do you say? You know, Marky Mark, I was with you at first because I understand it's really annoying when somebody isn't there playing their part of the team. But maybe he convinced himself that he was ill. Maybe you scared him that much that he was convinced uh -huh. that he couldn't come to work. Or maybe he did have a stomach bug. You might have eaten something bad the night before and then the timing of it was awful. So he thought he had metal mites. So I can't forgive you. I'm sorry. He got sacked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So no forgiveness there. I but mean, let's check in with the brother from another gutter with no morals. Giving, giving too much benefit of the doubt to, to Roger, I think. I mean, we're, we're back in the days of, of YTS and a lathe. Are the, are the lathes still going? 
I don't know. Feel, it doesn't feel like they are. 1989. Uh, 1989, the lathe. Um, metal, yes, I mean, I, I'm going to forgive just for the just for the example of metal mites crawling up your nethers. I think that's a... What a, <laughs> what a little, uh, little uh, thought that is to have whilst you're having your tea. Very it's, much. Uh, definitely forgiven. It's a life lesson, I, th I think, uh, we've had. Okay. A family of them. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Okay, it's the People's Verdict, please. Do you forgive Marky Mark, yes or no, on the text 61054. Start your message with Simon or you can email confessions at greatest radio <laughs> <laughs> we are the we greatest radio we yeah. are the greatest radio yeah. so if you would like to give us your verdict you text 61054 you start your message with simon or you can email simon at greatest hits uk. today's confession marky mark gets the smart speaker a tale of lathes and metal mites and nasty things in your stomach, although he actually made the whole thing up and they can't eat your femur or do anything <laughs> no. else. Uh, people's verdict, here it comes. Yes, everyone very forgiving tonight. Uh, Catherine Devon, totally forgiven. As a white yes, years ago, it was pretty much a given that you'd never be kept on anyway. Uh, Drix in Chalkhouse Green says, forgiven, very funny. Bless poor Roger the Dodger for being too naive to inquire whether metal mics exist. And finally, Andy in Stafford says, forgiven. Work with many different young lads like Roger. Nowadays, they're all <laughs> skiving off of you the phone. Well, I did think that when he was talking about Roger just sitting on a bench. Yeah. Nowadays, obviously, you would take your phone out and just check a few things. Correct. But it, it sounds like Roger was just sitting on a bench <laughs> yeah. and just doing nothing. If you have a confession, we would like to see it. And if we use it, you get a smart speaker. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, it's confession time, so gather around. And if you have a confession, don't forget, if we use your confession, you actually get a smart speaker. That's part of the deal. Mm -hmm. I read the confession, you get the smart speaker. Uh, Sister Katie's producing the show. That's why it's in tip-top form. Thank you. And she's sitting here. And the brother from another gutter is also waiting to uh, forgive. Definitely. Indeed. <laughs> uh, tonight comes from Kim. Good evening, Simon and team. What? When I was 14 years old, my friend went to a pet shop and brought two white mice. And I'd say at this point that confession regulars will know that white mice do not generally figure very well. No, no. Uh, when these stories unfold. Now, says Kim, so the white mice, not the most adventurous purchase maybe, but when you're 14, it was that or the stick insects. <laughs> and she found stick insects unappealing on account of them being stick-like and a bit insect-y. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Hence... Stick insects. Mm -hmm. We had stick insects. No. Horrible things. Uh, anyway, when we... <laughs> branching off. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say branching off. That's a branch of privet, oh, which they would so have good. When so she, good. When she got home, however, my friend, with her, my, with her mice, her mum hit the roof and told her if she didn't get rid of them, she was going to get into big trouble. So I said, being a good friend, I'll take them home as I'm sure it'll be okay with my mum. She's a tolerant woman and once had a hamster called Franz Ferdinand, named after the Archduke, not the band. I'm not sure it's the right day to be mentioned for Franz Ferdinand, but anyway. So let's say, named after the band. Yeah. However, I didn't tell my mum that I had my friend's mice in a shoebox. I decided to keep them a secret from her. They were my secret pets. This was very exciting for me, and I called them Brittany and Celine. I would bring them food and talk to them. We got on famously. Brittany, Brittany was considerably more active than Celine and would run rings around the shoebox and Celine. Celine was actually a bit scratchy and slow, but I wasn't worried. <laughs> okay. When I wasn't playing with them, Brittany and Celine lived under my bed in the shoebox. One day, my mum called me down for dinner, so I told Brittany and Celine what was going on. I put the shoebox under my bed and went for dinner. Probably sausage and mash, which was my favourite. I ate quickly, though, because I wanted to get back to my pets. But I was in for a shock. When I got back into my bedroom, somehow, Brittany and Celine had chewed a hole in the box oh, no. and escaped. I looked for them everywhere, but I couldn't find them. I was worried for their well-being and long-term prospects, but eventually gave up looking and, re and respected their right to live where they wished. <laughs> Quite right. Even if they were mice. Power to the mice. They got rights as well, you know. And then the inevitable happened, and one day I heard my mum screaming from the kitchen. I knew what had happened. I ran downstairs, actually quite excited to see Brittany and Celine again. But when I got there, there was Brittany and Celine, plus two other mice. Ooh. Four little white mice were looking up at us from a drawer in the kitchen. My mum went mad and was shouting, How have we got these mice in the house? I said, Well, mum, they're quite nice, aren't they? 
Maybe we could keep them. They look pretty cute. I didn't mention that one of them was called Celine and one of them was called Brittany. Well, my mum was having none of it. She managed to catch the mice by dropping a bowl over them and then, I'm afraid, got rid of them when I was out. I was privately upset as my time with Brittany and Celine had been wiped out. Their presence was sorely missed by me, but a few days later, my mum opened the oven and there were two more mice sitting <laughs> wow. in there on the grill rack. Quite how they got in the oven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heaven only knows. Smart mice. They were sitting on the grill rack. More screams, more running down the stairs. Maybe this was actually Brittany and Celine. Maybe they had survived somehow. Anyway, they ran off before my mum could deal with them. Then I heard a scream from the bathroom. Later, there was a scream in the bedroom and the hall. As the, di as the days went on, my mum kept finding mice everywhere. And in the end, she had to get someone to come in to sort out the problem. Mm -hmm. A man with some gear arrived. Yeah. And Brittany and Celine... I believe, went to the great mouse hole in the sky. I've never told my mum that it was me. It was because of me that we had all the white mice. What I didn't know was that my friend had brought a boy and a girl mouse. It wasn't Brittany and Celine, but Brittany and Ronan, or Brittany and, Rob Brit Brittany and Robbie. Who's to say? Yes. <laughs> Male plus female mouse. You know what's going to happen. Uh -huh. Me and my mum listened to your show, so I thought it was time to come clean. Ah. Mum, I am very, very sorry. Please, can you forgive me? Well, uh, Kim's mouse stories are the mice. I mean, they were living in... A, they had a reasonable life, these mice, but it didn't end well, I don't think. No. Uh, let's check in with Sister Katie. Well, Kim, I do feel sorry for you because I feel like you genuinely cared about these mice. You you had good intentions, but I'm a bit confused because you said that you were going to take them home because you thought your mum would be all right with it. So yes. I don't understand why you kept them quiet. You should have just told your mum from the get-go. You wouldn't have had the issue. And Brittany and Celine slash Ronan slash Robbie would still be Who with knows? us, potentially. No. Yes. So you are going to... Say not forgiven. Not forgiven. Okay, brother from another gutter. Well, it's a circle of life, really, isn't it? The, the, the mice were there and then they weren't there. And that's, that's very much how uh, life, life works. They were pretty smart, got into the oven, got into the drawers, got into the bath. I'd say pretty smart mice. Uh, but, it, but it, as it turned out, Celine's heart didn't quite go on. Ah, there uh, go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so not forgiven. Forgiven, rather. What were they doing? <laughs> People's oh, verdict, dear. please. People's verdict. 61054. First word is Simon. Do you forgive Kim? Yes or no? On the text. Thank you. Tonight's confession came from Kim. Sad story about mice called Brittany and Celine, who then seemed to have lots and lots of children, and they all ended up in, well, you know, there was a guy came with some equipment. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the nice confession. Uh, Kim is nervously waiting to find out if she's forgiven or not. Here's the people's verdict. So Drick says forgiven. I did the same thing and ended up with 22 mice. Uh, My mum go. made them disappear. May they rest in peace. How did these get in the <laughs> oven, though? How do mice is, get in the oven? That is great work. Yes. Uh, Kath says, I can't forgive Kim. Having dealt with a mice infestation recently, I really feel for her mum. I still approach the bathroom with caution every time. And Jerry finally quips with a bit of an entry for dad joke. Forgiven. I went into a pet shop once and asked to buy a wasp. The man said, we don't sell wasps. I said, well, you've got three in the window. Hey! Boom! Uh, all right, so if you have a confession, we would love to have it for next week, please, and then you get a smart speaker. Kim has just helped herself to the smart speaker. If you fancy one of them for next week, confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That is its special inbox. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk.